With a birdie on the 18th in a playoff, Tiger Woods wins the Masters and slips on the green jacket for the fourth time. Woods now has nine major championships. That's as many as Ben Hogan. Tiger once said only two men own their golf swings, Ben Hogan and Mo Norman. Hogan's legend is well known. But despite the fact that Mo Norman competed in the Masters, his story is not. Why? Chris Connolly now with the story of Mo Norman, a man who lived far outside the pristine cookie cutter world of the PGA Tour. In 1956, in the midst of a Canadian winter, a most remarkable invitation came through the mail to a 26-year-old pin setter at an Ontario bowling alley. It was from Bobby Jones, and it offered that humble pin setter, Murray Mo Norman, an opportunity to play in the world's finest golf tournament, the Masters. I recall him telling me the story and saying, look at me, I'm just a young kid here at Kitchener setting pins in a bowling alley for 10 cents an hour. And I get this invitation to the Masters, me at the Masters, going to play with Sam Snead. Mo was the Canadian amateur champion. But on the course, Mo lasted just 36 holes before dropping out. One year later, he did the same. And that would be the last time the golf world would get to see Mo Norman in a major. So what did they miss? They missed a little bit of genius. Then you got to miss a, a man that was um, totally in control of the ball. I mean, he could hit a golf ball as pure and as straight and as clean as, uh, as anything I've ever seen. Born in 1929, Mo Norman was the greatest ball striker of his generation and the next generation and the generation after that because he hit it hard and he hit it straight every single time. You're watching this swing which was very unorthodox. It went straight down the middle. But produced uh, unbelievable results. I mean the ball came out of the same window, same trajectory, uh, same curvature every time. He woke up every day and knew he was going to hit it well. He just knew he was going to hit it well. Every day. It's frightening the how straight he hits it. Never offline. This swing can't hit crooked. It's like iron by iron. The ball doesn't move. There isn't many people on this planet that could pick up a golf club and start hitting balls and have us stop and walk over and watch him hit them. That's, I think that's the ultimate compliment. When you've got Fred Couples, Nick Price, stop and walk over and watch Mo Norman hit a golf ball. If there never was a professional golfer who could swing the club like Mo Norman, there also was never one who looked or talked or acted like him. Mo was a, probably a dentist's dream. <laughs> he didn't have the best teeth in the, in the world. He would drink 26 Cokes a day. I mean, it was unbelievable how many Cokes he would drink. He certainly did not look like a, a golfer until he stood up to hit a ball. But he wasn't, you know, how most golfers are. They're all dressed up and they have matching shirts and pants and so on. That wasn't Mo. His clubs never had head covers on them. There was always, you know, kind of dirt on the clubs. He used to hit the ball off giant keys. He could hit off a Coca-Cola bottle. I mean, Mo was different. Such swagger inside the ropes suggested a self-confidence that Mo did not, in fact, possess. His assorted idiosyncrasies, his social anxiety, and his insistence on routine would lead some to speculate that he was autistic. Yet he was never diagnosed. Mo Norman avoided doctors since he was five years old, while accepting his own nature. To Mo, it made, it made no difference at all. I mean, he was just, Mo just said, uh, if this is the way God made me, this is the way I am. I have a little robot that goes around with me. I tell it what I'm thinking. I tell it what I see. I tell my little robot all my hopes and fears. It listens and remembers everything it hears. At first, my little robot followed my command. But after years of training, it's gotten out of hand. It doesn't care what's right or wrong, or what is false or true. But no matter what I try now, it tells me what to do. <laughs> right there, it tells me what to do. It was Mo's eccentricities that helped to drive him out of the 56 Masters. Mo shot a first round 75. Then, he told friends later, he found himself on the driving range 
with the great Sam Snead, who offered Mo advice. Despite his unique swing, Mo said he took the advice to heart right then and there, hitting some 800 shots that evening and blistering his hands. Mo shot a 78 the next day and left. He sat out there and hit so many balls that he could not grip the club. His hands hurt so bad and they're they're cut and blistered and he did so many balls he couldn't couldn't grip the club anymore, so that's why he withdrew. In 59, Mo decided to try life on the PGA Tour. Once again, his knack for being different attracted attention. Too many people in golf, they don't like characters. They want everybody to be as dull and as possible and just hit the golf ball, but let's face it, Mo, Mo would never be like that. Over the next year, Mo played in 12 PGA events, but after a fourth place finish in a tournament in New Orleans, a confrontation brought Mo's days on the tour to a sudden end. He was cornered by some PGA of America officials and one of the players, and Basically, they gave Mo a real dressing down. They said, you got to take a caddy, you got to stop fooling around. No more of the antics hitting balls off big tees. Two hours later, there's a knock on our door, and it's Mo, and he's heartbroken. And he said, I'm never going to go out on the tour again. Life ate me up. Life ate me up. I couldn't do what I wanted to do. That's, that's what hurt me. Mo returned to Canada, and his ball-striking genius would vanish from the sight of U.S. fans for good. He would go on to dominate the Canadian Tour, winning 50 tour events in all, record 17 holes in one, nine double eagles, and three rounds of 59. Still, when Mo Norman died in September of 2004 at the age of 75, many pondered what might have been had he stayed on the PGA Tour. A lot of the people would have really become attached to Mo, almost like a John Daly character. He would have had his own army. It would have been like Arnie's army. Golf lost a lot uh, when Mo had to retreat and just go back home to Canada and uh, be in the comfort of the cocoon of people he knew and who cared about him and who had compassion for him. And that's all he needed was compassion and understanding out there, and he didn't get that. Golf is happiness. It's intoxication without the hangover. It's stimulation without the pills. The price is high, yet its rewards are richer. Some say it's a boy's pastime, yet it builds men. It cleanses the mind, rejuvenates the body. There's these things and many more for those of us who know it and love it. Golf is truly happiness. Late in his life, Mo Norman did finally gain some acceptance from the golf world. In the mid-90s, he was hired by Natural Golf, whose founder had independently developed a swing very much like Mo's. He was also inducted into the Canadian Golf Hall of Fame, and Titleist CEO announced that he would put Mo Norman on a $5,000 a month retainer for life, just for being who he was. When we return one last time from Augusta, Tiger Woods, a remarkable Sunday stroll that ended with his fourth green jacket. He sits down with Tom Rinaldi for our Sunday conversation from Augusta.